the founder of Salvation Army, General William Booth, before his passing, gave six warnings, or some looked at them as prophecies, that will come as the day of the Lord approaches. Many of us know about the Salvation Army, the thrift store, and we see them specifically around the Christmas times, and they're noted for helping the poor and a Christian organization. And this organization was formed by General William Booth, and a man of such caliber who have impacted so many people throughout centuries said this let us see if they're fulfilling before our very eyes today william booth says the chief danger that confronts the coming century will be number one religion without the holy ghost what does that mean the bible says that in the last days there will be people who have a form of godliness but they deny the power from within and that is the holy spirit they may go to church they may give money to charities they may do a lot of things that quote unquote christians do however they are not truly born again because jesus says it this way when he talked to nicodemus he says that unless that you're born of water and of spirit you will by no means enter the kingdom of god are we seeing this in our world today that people are doing good acts they think that because they are a good person that they have practiced some form of religion they've stepped foot into a church building before and that's why they feel that they have a relationship with god but here's the danger that william booth says in the last days one of the six dangers will be religion without the holy ghost is that happening with us today number two he says that there will be christianity without christ oh how tragic how can you have christianity when it starts with the word christ people are doing christianity without actually following jesus isn't that the same warning that jesus gave his disciples that on that day many people would say to him hey jesus you ate in our streets you taught in the street corners and we all heard you but jesus says i never knew you because you never obey me you practice lawlessness today maybe we hear a lot about christian teachings or christian tv about how to be a better you how to be successful and how to have a better life now those things may not necessarily be wrong in and of themselves but that is not the essence of christianity essence of christianity is about jesus christ because without jesus no one can go to the father while this world may tell you that oh come get all you can out of life plan for your retirement and do everything you can to make yourself feel comfortable jesus himself said the other way he says that if you want to be great you got to become low if you want to be promoted first humble yourself if you want to be a leader and a master you got to be a servant of all and he demonstrated that by his own example and washed the disciples' feet. How many people today will look at the words of Jesus in the red letters and say, wow, these are so precious. So many times when I read the New Testaments and I read the words of Jesus, I'm like, yes, this is the words of eternal life and I have to obey it. But how many of us actually read the word of God, Jesus, what he said in the Bible and actually obey them? Forgive us, God, and change us from within so that we can truly follow you. We want Christianity with you being as a center, Jesus, and not without you, Jesus. Number three, William Booth says there will be forgiveness without repentance. Isn't that so true today that people want the forgiveness of God? Oh, do you want the grace of God? Do you want the love of God? Do you want him to forgive you? Yeah, sure, of course. But when you tell him to repent, people say, well, I can't even stand the word repent. I've heard a Christian tell me this. Don't talk about repentance. Just say belief because that's what some of the gospel writers have said, but that's not the entire picture. You have to look at the entire gospels. John the Baptist started his ministry saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus started his first sermon saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And on the day of Pentecost, when people were cut to the heart and they were convicted by their sin, they say to Peter, what must we do to be saved? What did Peter say? Did he say, oh, just believe just accept jesus into your heart just invite him into your life he never said anything like that he says repent and be baptized for the remissions of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit in another place he says repent and be converted because let me tell you without repentance there is no forgiveness jesus says unless you repent you will likewise perish repentance is not optional it's not something that we say okay i choose to do or something i don't choose to do it is a requirement in order to be saved and to enter the kingdom of heaven repentance means a change of your mind metanoia that leads to a change of action if you say that you're gonna head west one day and you change your mind that you're gonna head east but you end up still going west have you changed your mind have you repented no you have not and this is the tragic of christianity today that many of us think that we can just claim oh jesus i believe you oh jesus i follow you i go to church on sunday and i put my hands up and worship and yet on monday to saturday when no one's looking i'm doing exactly the same thing even on sunday apart from that one or two hours at church i'm doing exactly the same thing i live the same way like the world 
That, my friends, is not repentance. The way the Bible puts it is that we are to bear fruits worthy of repentance, which brings us to point number four. There will be salvation without regeneration. How many times have we heard on TV or in churches people saying, oh, if you want to accept Jesus today and invite him into your life, everybody with eyes closed, just raise your hands and repeat this prayer after me. And so they raise their hands and they speak that prayer. And afterwards, the preacher goes, oh, well, today all of heaven rejoices because you have invited Jesus into your life and you have accepted into your heart. My question is, where is that in the Bible? Now, I'm not fully against people praying a prayer to start their relationship with God, but our relationship with God is not only founded on just a prayer. It is a lifelong commitment, lifelong process, just like a marriage, just like a friendship. If you don't put effort into it, if you don't spend time with one another, it's not going to work. God is always faithful. He never leaves us or forsakes us, but you and I, we can be enticed and drawn away by the things of this world. These are the warnings that the Bible tells us to not to do. A very simple test of our faith to know whether we're genuine or not is very simple. Do we live the same life that we used to live before knowing Jesus? If we still have the same desires, we watch the same thing, listen to the same thing, like the same thing, the same way that the world does, then my question to you is, have you and I really been regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit? The first century church, if you read the book of Acts, people revered them, people esteemed them highly, and they dare not join them. Why? Because they profess that they're Christians? Because they're wearing this little cross symbol? Everybody knew at that time that the cross means shame. It means death. It is not some fashionable thing that we wear as jewelry on our neck, like today. But this group of people, the early church, turned the world upside down. Not just the apostles, not just the disciples that followed Jesus, not just the 12 disciples that followed Jesus, but everyone. But all the believers who are repented and truly regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit, if we read the book of Acts, that is the life that God called us to live today. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He doesn't change. The only people who have changed, we have to think, it's just us. The fifth danger that William Booth says is that there will be politics without God. And unfortunately, I think that today, it even goes further than that. It's not only politics without God, but it is politics against God. When the very essence, the value of Christianity is being trampled underfoot in the name of tolerance, in the name of love. You know that this danger, that this prophecy is being fulfilled in our very eyes and God is grieved. May we ask God for wisdom to know who to vote for and who to support because as Christians we need to stand up for what is truth as the Bible tells us. And last but not least, perhaps the most important, William Booth warns that the sixth danger is that there will be preaching of heaven without hell. Oh, we don't want to hear those fire and brimstone messages because they're going to offend people. We want to be seeker sensitive. We want to be seeker friendly so that they can come and attend the church. They can go through our programs. I'm not against any of that. We want people to come to church. We want people to come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. But we got to understand that we are the church. The body is the church. And if we don't tell people the biblical gospel, what Jesus talked about in the Bible, how are they going to come to a saving grace and a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? I understand hell is not an easy topic to talk about it, but do you know what? The millions and millions of people who are in hell today that wish that someone would have told them about the reality of hell when they were on earth. Can you imagine going to a gas station and someone is pumping gas and he didn't know that while he was pumping gas, gasoline was actually dripping all over his pants and all over his body. He just didn't know. And then you also saw another guy actually about to throw a cigarette on the floor right beside this guy. You know what's going to happen next. This guy's going to get burned up and it's not going to look good. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and be like, well, I don't want to offend the guy. I don't want to yell at him that he's going to burn because I want to be loving and friendly. No, that's stupidity. You would tell him, hey, sir, look. Your clothing, your pants are drenched in gasoline and that guy's about to throw in a cigarette run. The same is true if you see someone in a burning building and they're putting on their headphone. They don't know that the building's on fire and they're just having their time. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, oh, I don't want to offend them. I'm just going to let them burn in that burning building. No one's going to come to nothing. And this is the world that we're living in today. People are content. They're putting on their headphone, the distractions, the things of life. Jesus calls it the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this life drown out the conviction of the Holy Spirit their hearts that they think that their sin is okay that God has his love for them even without their repentance and before we point the finger on the world and to others let us look into our lives and say oh Holy Spirit is there anything in our lives that are not pleasing to you things that we don't even know on our blind side please reveal it to us because you say in your word that we are to pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one will see the Lord 
So what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna sit by and watch the world, your family, your friends, your relatives just go to a place that they can never get out from of eternal torment? Or are you gonna tell them and shout from the rooftop, hey, there is hope, hey, there's grace, hey, there's good news, that if we repent and turn our lives back to God, that we can be forgiven. Not this shallow, wishy-washy forgiveness that the Bible never offered, but that when we repent of our sins and we say, God, today we want to turn our lives back to you, that we no longer want to only have a name that we're alive, but that we're actually dead, like the church in the book of Revelation. We don't want to leave our first love. We want to come back to you, God. This is our prayer for today. If you're still not convinced that we're living in the end times, you need to look at this video right here where I talk about the five recent end time headlines we see in our world today. Go and watch it and click like on this video and share it with others who need to hear this because Jesus is coming soon. God bless you.